We are coming up on stage separation. We're just gonna hit the space bar. Ah, crud, I did not check my staging. Well, looks like we'll be taking this back to the drawing board. This is Echo 3, and welcome back to our modded career mode discussion. We have a contract down here to take an investor on a tour of the Kerbal Space Center. And we can either take an investor who wants to build a casino or one who like to build a space hotel. And I thought rather than building a boring rover to take this investor around the Space Center, let's build a helicopter. Now, I just did a tutorial on how to build a different style of helicopter, and I'm gonna do that for this particular mission. Matter of fact, I built this first and thought, well, this was so good, I should make a tutorial this week and explain fully how to do this because I really like this design. Now normally the game will auto assign the collective and cyclic for your blades for you and it doesn't always do, in my opinion, a great job with that, but with this particular style of helicopter, it does. It is entirely able to be controlled on just its aerodynamics. I don't need any reaction wheel control for this thing. I am gonna just throw on a little bit of these tail surfaces here. It makes it a little bit easier for forward flight. We'll throw on the Cal 1000, and if you have seen me do any helicopter tutorials, I bind the Cal to the main throttle, and I bind the blade, the blade pitch to the Cal 1000, and it makes it very easy to control by just messing with the throttle. I can make the helicopter go up and down, but this design is extremely stable, very easy to fly, I might actually say this is probably the best beginner helicopter as far as trying to learn to fly. I don't need reaction wheels at all, and it is just a pleasure to fly. So for this particular flight, let's do it entirely in IVA mode. Now we're going to go over to where the investor is, we just got to go pick him up, and then we got to take him around to most of the different sites around the Space Center. The contract there highlights exactly what sites and in what order we're supposed to go. Although there are specific areas where you're kind of supposed to be and if you, you can target them, although I already practiced this mission so I know exactly where I need to go. But in general, this was really fun to fly and just didn't have issues. It's very easy to control. This particular investor wants us to build an orbital hotel that is at least 350 kilometers above the surface of Kerbin and have room, I think, for 50 Kerbins. I looked at what the space casino contract was going to be and that was a little bit uh, more advanced than where our space program currently is. It was going to require a hundred Kerbals to be based on an asteroid that had been captured and put around Kerbin, and I just didn't feel like going to all the effort of finding an asteroid and trying to bring it around Kerbin because we need to set up a Sentinel Telescope network, and I didn't want to put the effort in, so <laughs> I'm going to do the Space Hotel mission probably instead, and we'll land here on the helipad because we can. Now, I didn't really get any funds for this. This just set us up for a future mission, which is the hotel. I'd like to pick up a couple more technologies here. This one in particular will let us scan anomalies, like we found that weird alien-looking spacecraft on the Kerbin's North Pole. Well, this will let us find those around the Mun and other places, because there's anomalies all around the Kerbin system and some pretty interesting things to find. Now I got a request to build a MUN base and we're going to start working on that right now. But I also got some requests about sending supplies around or shipping some things around to our space station. So this is not going to be just an ordinary MUN base. We're going to throw on, of course, what we need as far as electrical power, but I want to throw on actually quite a bit with science experiments and all of that. But we already have a research facility in orbit around Kerbin. So I'm going to put on this craft a small spaceship that we can launch from the surface of the MUN and with that science 
container there, we can transfer all the science from the MUN surface back to our orbital lab around Kerbin. So that's this little probe is just to hold all of those science experiments in it. And you know, those little reaction wheels, some antennas, so this thing will be controllable. I'm putting on these docking ports just so we can add to our MUN base if we so feel like it. And I'll probably use robotic parts to connect my segments. I do have a tutorial where I show how to make a MUN base and my thought is I would probably just do it the same way. It seems to work pretty well. I like putting grip pads on the bottom because it helps keep the thing from sliding around as opposed to landing gear or whatever. I, I, I like this approach. Now we need some fuel. Throw on a couple here on some side boosters. Let us land and I can decouple these if I want to. The Terrier engine is great. It's very efficient. Let's throw on a little bit of RCS on this because I first, there we go, because we're going to be moving some things around and I need to haul some tourists. I took a mission to haul some tourists up to the space center or up to our, our um, space station. So we'll dock at the space station first, drop off the tourist and a scientist into our lab. And then this craft will go the rest of the way to the MUN, and then it'll land, and we'll gather science at the MUN, and we'll send all that science then back to our orbital lab. Last time, we did leave a small landing craft around the MUN. I think I will pick it up and reuse it as well so I can get my scientist who's landed on the surface of the MUN back to the space station. And let's make sure we got enough power, make sure everything's set, look over everything. Now we need a decently sized booster to get this into orbit. Uh, I really like these particular engines. They have quite a bit of power and aren't too heavy. I think in another video I called them a bit overpowered, but I'm having fun with it, so that's that's kind of my idea. If I'm having a good time, then I don't really care if a part seems a little overpowered, because I play this game for fun. And I hope you're enjoying watching the video as well. If you have any future ideas for what to do or what you'd like to see me attempt, I'd love to hear your, your comments because you guys give me some good ideas and some really fun things to try, like a MUN base and sending supplies to our space station and, and moving things around. With the new update coming out, I'm not quite sure what's going to end up happening with this series. I don't know how it's going to affect the mods, I mean, no one really knows how the mods are going to be affected. It's possible that it doesn't really break anything and I can just keep running my series with the update. Or the other possibility is some of these mods are not going to work and I either have to keep this series going on this 1.11 or maybe just start something new for the final version of Kerbal Space Program. I am looking forward to the new version coming out next year. Hopefully, there's no more delays on it. I intend to start making videos about it when it comes out, and I'll probably quit playing Kerbal Space Program, the original one anyway. Probably. Now, what we're doing here is we're going to rendezvous with our space station. I'm not going to get it here on a launch, but I set up my maneuver, and we'll get a pretty close encounter when we come back around to finish our first orbit. My technique is I burn on the target side of the retrograde marker. And what you see that does is my relative velocity is decreasing while my closest approach is also getting closer. And we just need to dock here. Just be careful. Uh, actually, I tried this whole thing before I got up here and then realized I cannot dock with my side mounted docking ports there because those fuel tanks are in the way so I had to put a larger docking port 
on my probe, which also made sense because I want to dock my probe back here after landing on the MUN. All right, now we just need to transfer some crew from this base to the station. And once we do that, we will depart for the MUN, which isn't you know, overly exciting. I've been to the MUN many times. Probably most of you watching have been to the MUN quite a few times. But in this case, I want to land where I sent the rover to scout for a base. So there's a particular crater, and not a very big one, where I intend to land this base. But before I land, even, we're gonna rendezvous and attach our lander from our last MUN mission. And, you know, our inclination isn't great. I'm gonna make a mid-course correction here and set up a more equatorial orbit around the MUN. You guys hopefully are, are familiar with that kind of stuff. If you're not, I mean, I have transfer videos if you want to check them out, but we'll just change. There we go. Now we're going to burn retrograde here, get into orbit around the Mun. Probably need to make a few further refinements here on our inclination. So the further you are away or the slower you are, the cheaper an inclination burn is, which is why I'm doing it when I'm further away from the MUN. Then we're going to set up our encounter here. So making, playing, kind of playing with the maneuver nodes here. Then we'll make another retrograde burn. And so on our next orbit, we will rendezvous with the landing craft. Now this landing craft doesn't have any probe control or anything. It had a pilot in it last time. So I will need to eventually end up I'll send Bob over there and he will kind of fly it. It won't be great. It won't have any SAS ability, but it'll at least be somewhat controllable. So the first thing we do is we get close. Then I need to detach the probe. Then we hook up with lander and then we reattach our science probe. Now we can finally land this whole contraption back on the MUN. You can see the rover there, and I want to land really close to, I mean, almost right next to it. It's a kind of a small crater, but it's pretty flat in the bottom of that crater. In general, I, I like to land in the bottom of a crater, kind of in the center of it. They tend to be fairly flat locations, and depending on the monstrosities you like to send, or I like to send, my crafts aren't always the most stable shaped. And this is a little tall, so I want to land somewhat flat, although it's not it's not too bad. I am using the Kerbal Engineer landing guidance. So if you see that little red dot on the surface, that tells me where I'm predicted to land. Very useful if you're trying to do a pinpoint landing. The mod trajectories is also helpful for this, but uh, Kerbal Engineer gives me that suicide burn timer readout. So for things like the MUN, it's a pretty good mod to use. Sounds like they're going to use something like Kerbal Alarm Clock that's going to be added in the new version. That sounds really useful because I use Kerbal Alarm Clock a lot. I, it's hard to imagine trying to do inter interplanetary transfers without that mod. It just simplifies the process. Now we're going to gather all the science from our base here, including a, a surface sample and EVA reports and crew reports, and we'll transfer all of that information up into our science storage unit. Then we can put Bob here in the lander, and so with our scientists in the lander, we will, you know, I'm going to transfer the fuel, the remaining fuel just to make sure we have enough Delta V to do this because I'm not just going back to Kerbin. We are actually trying to rendezvous with the space station again. So we're going to take off and because there's no atmosphere, we can just go horizontal almost immediately and we'll try to get a apoapsis around 10 kilometers. It's good for time warp and I know at 10 kilometers, I won't hit any mountains or anything. The highest peaks are, I believe, just under eight kilometers on the MUN. So eight or above, you should be all right. Uh, but 10, I just find to be a good general reference there. Now we're gonna head back to Kerbin 
and I'm going to try and get my periapsis to be basically the same altitude, 100 kilometers, as our space station, and then I'll make a retrograde burn there and try and set up my rendezvous with the space station. All right, we're coming up here pretty close. We're going to make the burn. We're doing pretty well on Delta V, so I didn't have to transfer all the fuel, but I didn't mind having a little extra, and it wasn't doing me any good on the mun anyway, so. All right, now we're just going to set up our closest approach here, and now we need to burn retrograde to the target, and we're going to close in here. This, this is a pretty small craft. Now, I don't have any kind of RCS thrusters on this, so I have to just point my craft the right way to maneuver. So you can dock without RCS fuel or anything. It's harder, but it's doable. All right, we're going to put our scientist over here into the science module and have him earn some more science while he's there. Now, we need to recover all of these guys, so... We've built all kinds of crazy shuttles and different contraptions. One kind of plane we have yet to build is a single stage to orbit. So that is what we're going to build right now. So I'm going to be using the Panther engines. I, I try using one of the modded engines and it, it doesn't work out right. I'm going to go back and use the Panther engines. The goal being I can get to around 800 meters per second in about 20 kilometers in altitude. So then I need my uh, rocket engine to do the rest of the work to get into orbit. So it doesn't need to have, you know, 3,400 meters per second of delta V just for the rocket engine. I can do a lot of the work with just the jets. Now we're just going to kind of set up this ST SSTO. This is obviously way bigger than we need. I think I might use this for transferring crew back and forth from the space station in the future because it it does end up being a, a pretty good design we'll just throw on some control surfaces here now you can see how the center of mass shifts so the center of mass is going to shift forward as we drain fuel that is not necessarily a problem but we will need to be aware of it so it's going to be a little bit more front heavy as we return. That can be a good thing. Our craft will actually be more stable on, entry, on our re-entry because the center of mass is going to be there close to the center of the craft and we're going to be stable in the hypersonic speed range. It does mean that landing and our subsonic speeds are going to be a little harder to control. The plane is going to want to tilt forward it's going to want to nose down more but I think we're going to maintain controllable through that so a, a shifting center of mass is not necessarily a bad thing but it is something you need to be aware of throughout the flight now this is where I make the changes I swap out those modded engines and put the panther engines on there I, I don't know why I tried the modded engines in testing I used the panther and I thought oh when I'm recording this video oh, I'll try these modded engines they don't work um, then we have some RCS ports on this and put some RCS fuel. The last time I launched this, I actually realized I forgot the RCS fuel. I got all the way up to the space station and, oh, I forgot RCS fuel. So, believe it or not, I make a lot of mistakes when I am practicing and recording these videos. Generally, I just show you what works rather than the, like, three hours of what didn't work. Uh, in this case, you know, I just sometimes I forget stupid things, and even in in this video, I I do, I just make stupid mistakes because I'm not thinking or I get impatient, and really with, with space travel, you know, you got to be careful, you got to be patient, you got to do things right, watch what you're doing. Obviously, you know, I'm just messing with Kerbals; these aren't real human lives, so I'm I'm a little bit more reckless with them. Now we need to rendezvous and dock again, which we've done quite a bit already in this video. But we're going to come around here and rendezvous with our space station. Now we don't have a lot of extra Delta V, but we have enough. Which, you know, that's all you really need is enough. I'm hauling quite a bit of dry mass on this thing. Probably could have 
made it a lot more efficient if I didn't have so much crew capacity. But I was kind of trying to future-proof this craft and use it for hauling lots of Kerbals and lots of tourists up into low Kerbin orbit. Probably be using this space station more. Might get some future contracts to expand it or do other things with it. I don't know what future contracts we'll get. And, you know, I hadn't built an SSTO yet, so... Uh, are you guys into building single stage to orbit space planes or anything like that? You know, go ahead, leave your comments. Uh, tell me what you think on that. And if you're liking this video, go ahead and uh, hit that like button. And if you are not subscribed to this channel yet, why don't you go ahead and do that so you don't miss any of my future content. I make a lot of tutorials and try to explain what I'm doing, uh, not just, you know, rush through things. Like in this case, I got hurry and tried to rush through docking. It, I botched it. I broke some solar panels because I was not paying attention, trying to get in a hurry. Like, I just want to get this thing docked. I want to get this finished. You know, this video is already starting to run a little longer than I would normally make my videos. But I had all this other stuff I wanted to include and show you guys. But we got it docked. Um, I used the docking port. I changed the control point to the docking port on both crafts and had them face each other it does make docking a little easier if you do that now we use the RCS thrusters to push away so we don't have to worry about running into our space station especially when I time warp you can kind of end up drifting into another craft because in time warp the physics is disabled and you can actually have parts warp or clip into each other and then when you drop out of time warp they will all explode and it does create some interesting fireworks but I, I didn't really want to kill all my Kerbals that way. Our craft ends up being very stable on entry and if this is your first video of mine you've ever seen I do have tutorials on how to land space planes back at the runway. This is uh, a very similar procedure here. I generally try to have my orbit line drop down where it's going to intersect the runway and then kind of follow that. I'm trying to kill enough velocity here, so I'm basically going to stall right as I hit the runway. So I'm trying to flare up and stop, and there we go. We've recovered all those Kerbals, got that little bit of tourist money. We have landed on the MUN, we transferred a bunch of science, and so our orbital science lab's got quite a bit of data to work off of. Now, it's going to take a while, but we can get several hundred units of science from it. Last video, we did launch a probe into orbit around Kerbin, and there was about 30 days left before our transfer window. Well, we are now at the transfer window for Duna, so let's go ahead and launch this probe for Duna right now. Uh, Duna transfer window is when Duna is about 45 degrees ahead of Kerbin. If you've watched almost any transfer window tutorial they generally reference Duna it's one of the easiest planets to get to it is hardly inclined at all compared to Kerbin so you can usually get an encounter with the planet directly from your ejection bird from Kerbin without needing any kind of mid-course correction I'm Echo 3 and I will see you next time